In the options panels, we have several effects that we can enable to make the display look better. So don't be mistaken, what you see in the display here is a simplification of your scene. It's not the final render. It's just to give you an idea of how it looks at the end. We are not yet at the point of what you see in the render is the final rendering. You'll use another render engine, whether it's the physical render, which is the default render engine of Cinema 4D, or another one like Redshift. Okay, so now that being said, you can make the display look better by just tweaking a few options here. So I'm just going to tear up that menu and then by holding and dragging, I can dock it right here. So we have already seen about the level of detail. Now what I'm interested in is all the effects here. So you can just turn off the effects as a whole. The display will be much faster to draw, but won't look any good. You can see it's a very, very simple scene. There is nothing much going on. If I enable the effect, I can add another effect. So for example, let's start with the shadows. The shadows are going to display the shadow of the scene and adds a lot of depth in the scene. You can see the flying saucer going nearby this asteroid and casting a shadow. Okay, so one very important thing to understand is that those shadows are from the light you added yourself. If you are in the display mode quick shading, you won't see any shadow whatsoever. Okay, that's only in this grow shading. And if you have light with shadow enabled, and then you will be able to see the shadows. Then we have the transparency. So the transparency is, for example, in this example, our flying saucer here, the cockpit. If I enable transparency, we're able to see through. Then we have the SSAO, is the screen space ambient occlusion. It's going to simulate the contact shadow of object together. The SSAO will be more obvious in this scene. We have two fire trucks and they look very fake because they are no contact shadow. They don't seem to be touching the ground. The SSAO, if I activate it immediately, make the scene look a lot better. That's because we have now some contact shadow on the ground and also contact shadow of the intersecting parts of the object. You can see without width. You can tweak that by going to the option and configure. And here in effect, in the effect, you have everything. So you can activate the SSAO as a whole like this. You can see it's synchronized with this one. It's exactly the same settings. And if I untwirl here, we have the options. And the radius is going to show us how far the shadow is going to go. So if I increase the radius, you can see, or if I decrease it, SSAO stands as Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. So it's going to calculate from the screen space. So actually this fire truck is on that ground, but only the wheels are touching the ground. But to simplify the calculation, it's going to actually sample the scene from the point of view of the viewer. So the plane is behind the truck and it's going to draw contact shadow on this part here. We can see that better if I, if I raise this sample here, the power, I can, we can see it very clearly. And then the depth range is going to calculate the actual distance from the object and the object behind it. So at 200 centimeter, it's going to draw the shadow here. If I decrease it, you can see now we won't have any shadow on that part. It's more realistic this way. Then I can lower the radius to have something much tighter like that. And at last I can 
I go back to the power of one. The samples are going to determine the quality of SSO. So if I go back to a bigger range, you can see at some point there is some staircase, some bending effect happening here. If I decrease the sample, it will be even more obvious. You can see we are, we are adding uh, like steps. So if I increase the sample, at some point, the stepping effect disappeared and it looks much better. But it's not that necessary. If you have a, a range lower and a short radius, so here now I can decrease the sample to something much lower, like 16, the 16 samples default value is very good. Fine details is just going to work better on very fine detail. You can see it very faintly here when I activate and deactivate. Blur is going to blur everything, so that's also something very good to, to keep. And the mode here, parameter low, you can see it with the, this, this sphere, auto illuminated. And if I change from parameter low to diffusion, increase the power, it's going to draw the dark shadow inside the sphere. If I go to parameter low, you see, now it's inside the sphere. And here it's outside, so it's much more realistic. Let's go back to the default value. Going back to our asteroid fields, you're going to see now the other option, uh, the tessellation. So the tessellation is going to create, uh, to subdivide uh, more polygons uh, on our object uh, in the viewport. So here we have all our asteroids. Uh, and if I activate the tessellation, uh, they are much more refined. If I go here and show the go line, uh, and Let's go to the quick shading line. This way we can see the original polygons here. And you see in the viewport, it, it looks much more refined than that. That's because of the tessellation. It will be even more obvious if I go back in the material option. So I can do it actually here and remove the material. Okay, so now this is with, without. You can see there is a difference uh, in the display. You can control the tessellation by going on the material itself. So here in this example, it's the rocks, uh, the rocks material. And here in the viewport, we can have on the bottom, the viewport tessellation and you activate here. So here it's with none, and now with uniform. I can increase, decrease that tessellation. So eight is a good middle ground. Beware though, the tessellation is pretty intensive on the CPU. So if we're going back and launching the preview, you can see it's very slow now, we are nine, FPS, but our objects are much more refined, as you can see here. So I'll just switch off the test edition, and we can see at last the depth of field. So the so depth of field is going to show us a depth of field, obviously. So let's activate it, and let's go back to our go shading. And as you can see, now we have our default field. So the front elements are blurred. The focus is on the flying saucer. So now here, for example, our flying saucer is in the focus and the background is in the blurry zone. We can see that also if we're going to window to our car, viewport car, so you can load the file. And in this scene, I can activate the depth of field. 
And you can see our background is blurred now. So actually, you'll be able to set our depth of field by going to the camera. Then in object here, we have a focus object. This is a null, this is linked to a null. The null is here. And if I translate this way, I move it on the back. We can see our focus is changing. It depends also on the settings of our camera. So if I go back to the camera here and in details, uh, in physical, you can change here your f-stop. So if I increase that value to 2, the depth of field will be less intense. So the background is blurred, but not as much as earlier. So let's go back to 0.5. Here we have almost everything in the scene. We don't need any tessellation because there's, there are no displacement in, the, in our scene. The last thing to do is going to the filter and use the geometry only. So we'll see in the next video everything about the filter. In geometry only now we have a scene that looks pretty good considering it's only the viewport.